Good morning, South. Please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance with Ms. Deborah Green. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. from them later in the show. Good morning once again and welcome to the Falcon Report for this Friday the 14th of January 2022, a day one. I'm Jade Hornick. And I'm Damiana Barrera. As the end of the semester approaches, the end of a big technology class project is approaching as well. Let's turn to Nia Adlam to hear all about it. Working on this project these past few weeks, the eighth grade students in Mr. Edwin Fair's engineering technology classes assembled their own personal quiz boards. Before they got started on the assembly process, the students got the opportunity to choose a personal interest to base their project on. From a student's favorite TV show to a quiz on celebrities, there was no limit to choosing. The students began with using cardboard and their personal computers to design the background of the board. Questions were created and put in a specific order printed on the board and two connected wires were then attached to either side. In order to properly match the question with this answer, students clipped the corresponding wires to bolts so anyone could determine the right answer themselves. If the wires they paired were linked, a small light bulb would glow, indicating that they were correct. A fun and hands-on learning experience for sure. For the Falcon Report, I'm Nia Adlam. On the topic of technology, the students of Ms. Jeanette Azaretto's seventh grade science class worked on their circuit boards before the break. The students worked in teams and were able to select what kind of circuit they wanted to create with the options of parallel or series circuits. Once placed into groups, the students were equipped with their very own electronic snap circuits, manipulating a variety of objects to turn on through the conduction of electricity. The instruction kit included an endless number of combinations that the group could choose from, writing their circuits to connect their batteries to the device of their choice. Some teams were able to make a fan spin, some turned on a light, and some even turned on a radio. Using the power of electricity and their newfound knowledge of circuits, each group finally submitted their completed circuit board, finishing triumphantly with a number of creative combinations. Students in Mr. Paul Brower's English 1 class enlightened themselves by analyzing songs and poetry. Using poem.org and other similar websites, classmates were to select a song and poem and then got to work comparing the two. After selecting their pieces, students then annotated and wrote a detailed summary for their poems and songs. Using these annotations as a basis, the class then organized their information and created PowerPoint presentations in order to effectively exhibit the song-poem connections and general contrasts and comparisons. While presentations were underway, the audience engaged in taking notes and writing reports on their takeaways from each literature showcase. And so what I would say, I would think that Hopeful educators of the world now have a platform through South's newly formatted Future Teacher Club. Nyla Bishmouth sat down with Miss Green to learn more about the new Futures Teacher Club. Nyla? I'm joined here with Miss Green, the advisor of South's newest club, the Future Teachers Club. So Miss Green, what drove you to start this new club? Actually, this club is started out of a district initiative. What we want to do is expose students across the district to the possibilities of a career in education. And why do you think there was a need for this club? Like I said before, this was a district initiative. And what I think districts across Long Island are finding is that there's so many jobs available and they don't have a big pool of teachers to pull from. Well, it's clear you have a passion for teaching. What made you become a teacher? I think very early on, I am a South graduate. I had a lot of teachers here at South that it made me enjoy coming to school, whether it was my favorite subject, mathematics, or any other subject. For students thinking of joining this club, what advice do you have for South's future teachers? I am, for anybody interested, even if you have even the slightest notion that you might want to become a teacher, definitely come check the club out. We meet on the second and fourth Tuesdays of every month and we really just talk about the different opportunities, the different certification processes, the different degrees that you would have to pursue, things that are going on in education that we're going to talk about, have speakers. It's really just informational. It's not a service club, but it is if you're curious about what being in education is about, definitely come and check out the club. 
Well, thank you so much for joining us, Ms. Green. Back thank to you. you. When the Falcon Report returns, we'll learn more about the record low temperature this week. But first, a bird's eye view of a sunset on south. The Falcon Report will be right back. Stop these kids from cutting class. Failure is not an option. Now get to it. Yes, yes sir. sir. I gotta leave. Meet me in the orchestra room now. Really? An orchestra room? I don't know. My confidant told me. See? Look what I told you. Your students! Hey, you guys just can't be cutting class. Too busy studying. Exam tomorrow. So that's the reason. Well, boys, change the plans. Help these kids get the help they deserve. The teachers here are already more than willing to help. Ever since I was a little kid, I've always wanted to be a teacher. Just a few more years till I can become a teacher. But that's way too long. I wish I can learn how to become one now. Well, you're a good kid because there's a teacher's club where you can learn to become a teacher. Okay, thanks random person. You're welcome. Wow, he must be excited to learn about the club. Some record-breaking temperatures this week, as South students had to brave the intensely cold weather. Ethan Rowano joins the show with the detail. Cold is an understatement as temperatures this week hit lows that haven't been seen in three years. Starting with a chilly awakening, Monday morning, students arrived at school dressed in several layers. It was uh, really cold. I had to bundle up today. Tuesday exhibited the most piercing temperatures with a feeling close to single digits. It's real, really cold out here. You know, it's under 17. Outside and it's freezing. Bracing the cold, students were embraced by the warmth from the school, providing comfort from the frigid temperatures. I can't feel my fingers or my nose. Yeah. Even though the highest temperature this week barely hit above freezing, students and faculty came to school armored with their coats, ready to take on the school day. Stay warm, South. For the Falcon Report, I'm Ethan Ruano. And on that note of weather, I had serious doubts that we'd even get close to such low temperatures again. Let's check in. Ethan Ali, who can hopefully prove us right. Ethan? While well, Tuesday's huge coldness may have subsided, it has been replaced with just regular coldness. And expect tomorrow to feel a whole lot like Tuesday. Today will feature highs of 41 degrees, but also an increasing amount of winds throughout the day. Tomorrow will be frigid with temperatures between 13 and 20 degrees, and sufficient wind will make outside quite unpleasant. Sunday will be a little warmer with clouds and temperatures in the high 20s. And our three-day weekend will wind up in a wintry fashion, as early Monday we'll see a mix of snow and rain with potential accumulations ranging between 1 to 3 inches. Enjoy the winter weekend, and back to you. And while winter sports have braced for the cold outdoors, the indoor gymnastics team took on Grey Neck South this Monday. Let's check in with the Falcon Report's Alina Trzinski to hear all about it. Alina? Thanks, ladies. The girls' gymnastics sure had an amazing performance at their meet Monday. The meet started off with vaulting in which Cam Vernetton scored a 7.9, which secured her first place in the event. Then in the uneven bars, Courtney McPherson scored 6.7, good for second place. After taking the top three places, the girls knew they were well positioned to succeed. <laughs> then it was time for balance beams. Yet again, Courtney McPherson was impressive, scoring a 7 and placing second. Sanai Bassett was right behind her with a 6.9. The last of the events was the floor routine in which the girls secured their win with first place Cam Van Eden, the top performer, receiving a whopping 8.5. And that's sports. That's all for this edition of the Falcon Report. For Jade Hornick, I'm Damiana Barrera. Have a great weekend, South. <laughs>